If you're looking for a complete guide to building and setting up Google Ads campaigns, then you'll absolutely love this video. I am going to give you loads of free professional tips in how to set up high performing Google Ads campaigns. And it's all coming up right now, so watch this video to find out more. Before we dive into how to set up the campaigns, we're going to have a look at the separate components which make up an AdWords campaign. What you're looking at now is a visual chart of a traditional AdWords account structure which is used when building campaigns. Our campaigns will follow the same structure and we will be setting up each component individually. I strongly recommend that you create an organised account. When set up this way it will be much easier to manage and you'll find that the campaign will perform much better. So let's talk through each of the components of a Google Ads account now. The first thing you will need is an AdWords account. To create an account, Anyone can simply visit the AdWords website, provide a suitable email address, choose a password and then create an account. It's as simple as that. So once you have created the account, you can get going with building your AdWords campaigns. A campaign is essentially a set of related ad groups that is often used to organise the categories of products or services that you offer. Each campaign is usually centred on a goal that aligns with the main thing that you want to get from your campaign, such as sales or lead generation. For example, you might have a campaign to promote a product or service that you sell. You need to make at least one campaign before you can create the ads in your account. Some of the most common types of campaigns that are built within AdWords are search campaigns, which show a text ad on the Google search results page, display campaigns, which can show banner ads across the Google display network, and video campaigns, which can show video adverts on YouTube. In most cases, campaign types can't be changed once the campaign has been created or posted. Next, within the campaign, you can create what are known as ad groups. Ad groups should be based on subtopics of a campaign theme. For example, if your campaign is to sell socks, your different ad groups could be red socks, blue socks, yellow socks, and so on. There is no recommended number of ad groups to have in one campaign. But typically it's more manageable not to go overboard since this will stretch your campaign budget across so many ad groups. Within each ad group you have keywords. These are the keywords which will trigger your text ads. It's critical to conduct thorough keyword research to find out the highest quality keywords to add to your campaigns. So within your ad groups you have keywords. If people type those keywords into Google your ads will show. So within an ad group you also need to have ad copy. This is the actual text that will appear when your ad is triggered. Each ad group should have three to four ads per ad group, all directing people to the same landing page. When creating ad copy, it's important to follow the AdWords guidelines in order to get your ads approved. If you do not follow these guidelines, your ads could be disapproved. Okay, now that we've been through what an AdWords account is and the, the components of the AdWords campaigns, it's time to get started with the setup process. So the first step is creating an account. To do this you just need to go to ads.google.com and you'll be presented with a screen like this or similar to this. Simply press start now and that will take you through to the next screen. So from here you can either sign in to Google Ads or you can create a new account. If you are creating the account on behalf of a client it might be worth checking to see whether there's an account already. If they do they can share the logins with you or they can create a new user using your email address. So if there is an account already, you might want to sign into that current account. However, for this video, we're going to create a new account and that can be done down here. So click create account and then it'll say whether it's for yourself or to manage my business. We're gonna go with to manage my business. And that will take you through to the next screen. Here, you can enter your first name, your last name, your email address, and then you can create a password for your account. Once you have entered your details on that last screen, you come through to this screen, um, which asks you to optionally provide your phone number, um, optionally provide a recovery email address, and then also to keep your account secure, it wants to know your date of birth and your gender. So we'll fill those details in now. On the next screen is the privacy and terms. You can have a read through those, and then at the bottom, we can agree to the Google terms and agree to the processing information create account. So on the next screen there's the option to start creating a campaign 
However, we're going to skip through the campaigns and ad groups for now as we want to carry out keyword research to find out which keywords we're going to add to our campaigns. So down here, we can create an account without a campaign. Just select that button now. On the next screen, it wants you to confirm your business information, such as your billing, country, your time zone, and your currency. So we'll set that now. Okay, congrats, you're all done. Time to explore your account. And here we are. So this is an AdWords account. These are the navigation panels up here for campaigns uh, once they're built. And this is where the data will show uh, once it starts to accumulate. Locations, change history. As we build campaigns, more and more options will appear down here. So as mentioned, we're going to create a campaign, but to create the campaign, we need keywords. So what we're going to do is carry out keyword research. Keyword research is one of the most important, valuable and high return activities in the search marketing field. Keyword research is where we use tools available to us to find out the search volume of keywords that we want to appear for on Google. So, step one for Google keyword research. Now that we've logged into our Google AdWords account, we're going to click on the wrench icon in the toolbar at the top of the page. Then, we're going to choose Keyword Planner. So, the first time you use Google Keyword Planner, you may see this message pop up, which is basically some instructions and some more information on how to use the Keyword Planner. Feel free to read through this if you'd like. However, for now, I'm going to select Go to Keyword Planner. So, at this stage, you've got two different options. Discover new keywords and get search volume and forecasts. The Discover New Keywords is, as it suggests, a way to find new keywords. The Get Search Volume and Forecast is, if you have a list of keywords, you can enter them in here and it will tell you the search volume for those keywords. We're looking to find new keywords, so we will select Discover New Keywords. As you will see on the next screen, there's two options again. Start with keywords or start with a website. Start with a website allows you to enter a domain or a page to help you find keywords, which is a pretty nice feature. However, we're going to start with keywords. So a quick note here, the value you get from the planner is largely based on the information that you enter here. So you want to be strategic about what you type into this field. I certainly recommend to enter the most specific terms you can think of for the products or services that you want to promote. So in this example, I'm going to look to advertise for the service that I offer, which is Google Ads Campaign Management or PPC agency. So some bad examples of keywords here would be PPC. You know, PPC is a very broad term and people might be looking for the definition of PPC. They might be looking for informational tutorials. They might not specifically be looking for a PPC expert to manage their campaigns. So a better example would be PPC expert. PPC campaign, no, PPC marketing agency. Outsourced PPC services. Okay, and that will do for now. You may want to enter more. I think you can put up to 10 in if you like, but just for this explanation, we're just gonna use these three. So once you've entered your keyword information to the keyword cell, click get results, which is down here. Okay, just remove this. So now we get our keyword research here and I'll just talk you through each of the different parts of this screen. At the top of the page, you'll notice three targeting options, locations, language, and search networks. Here's what the three things mean. Locations. This is the country or countries that you're marketing to. Because I'm in the UK, it's gonna show me the search volume for the whole of the UK. I can do in here multiple countries. If I would like. So I can add the search volume for United States if I would like. I can add more countries. I can remove countries. I can add individual towns or cities. London. So I can get the search volume just for London. Manchester. Target there. Or where I'm based is Leeds, and target Leeds. So I can remove London and Manchester. And now I will get the search volume 
for just leads. Language is the languages that I want to target. We speak English here. And finally, search network. So what this means is this is whether or not you want to advertise on Google or Google and their search partners, which would be this option here. The search partners is other sites which include Google search engines or other Google properties like YouTube. For now, we're looking to do a Google search campaign, so I'll keep it just to search Google. So that's all set up. Further down here, we have the report into the Google Keyword Research with several columns here. So the first one is Keyword, which is a list of all keywords that Google considers most relevant to the keywords that we typed in. We get the average monthly searches, pretty self-explanatory. This tells you how many searches there is a month for that keyword. So for example, outsourced PPC services gets searched not to 10 times, whereas PPC expert is searched between 10 and 100 times. Competition, this reflects the number of advertisers bidding on that keyword. So the higher the competition, the more advertisers are bidding on that keyword. This is quite a good indication how good the keyword might be. For example, if a lot of competitors are bidding on a keyword, it normally means that it's quite a good keyword. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then top of page bid, low range and high range. So this is the cost per click for that keyword. So if you want to bid on the keyword PPC agency, it will cost you between 13 and 31 pound a click. Don't get put off by high CPC keywords. If competitors are already bidding quite a lot of money for that traffic, it normally means that traffic is quite lucrative. You can scroll to the bottom, it will tell us that we have 110 keywords related to the original keywords that we entered. For example, if we go back up, we entered PPC Expert, PPC Marketing Agency, Outsourced PPC Services. These three keywords are the keywords that we provided with the search volumes. And here are other keyword ideas. So we've got PPC Agency, Paid Search Agency, PPC Advertising Companies, Best PPC Agency, Paid Search Company, PPC and Digital Marketing, and so on. If we scroll further down, we may find a couple of keyword ideas that are not so relevant. So, freelance PPC consultant, freelance PPC manager, SEO PPC experts, PPC audit agency. I mean, we can do audits, but really we want to be looking at campaign management here. Bing ad experts. We do Bing, but for this campaign, we want to focus on our Google AdWords marketing. Real estate PPC companies. So some of these keywords we might not add to our campaign. So what we need to do now is refine our keyword list. To do this, we're going to download and export into Google Sheets and get ready to start refining our keyword list. To download the list of keywords, if we scroll back up to the top here, we can download our keywords here. And it will download the report. And now I'm going to import this into a Google Sheet. File, Import. Upload this sheet here. Okay. 
So we don't really need these two top rows here, so we can delete these. Current, it's got a list here for currency, we don't really need that, so we can delete that. The average monthly searches is not here available at the minute, so we can also delete that. And then anything over here, so we've got minimum search volume, maximum search volume, competition, you know, high and low, the top of the page bid low range, top of the bid high range, and then all of these here we don't really need for now, so don't worry about them. We can just delete these. So the next step is sorting my keywords A to Z, which I've done so already. Remove this column. Yep. Okay, so now I'm going to go through the list and just delete out any keywords which I don't think are relevant to my campaign. So AdWords Expert, that seems fine. AdWords Management Expert. AdWords PPC Agency, Consultant, yep, these all seem fine. So, average cost for PPC management. This person is looking for the price, which, if they're thinking about the price now, that could be quite good. Right, so I've ordered my keywords A to Z to make it easier to review them. Now I'm going to go through and delete out any keyword, keywords which I don't think are very relevant to my campaign. So, AdWords Expert, AdWords Management Expert, these all seem fine. Consultants, Managers, Management, Agency Google AdWords, yep. And then we're coming through to here, so, the Bing Ads Expert, you know, we do do Bing advertising, but I think for now I want to focus on the Google AdWords management. So I'll just delete this keyword from our list. Okay, these freelance keywords, I think they're going to be looking for an individual freelancer to work with. They might want them to come on site. And also, you know, we're trying to target businesses that want to work with other businesses. I think if someone's looking for a freelance PPC specialist, they're either looking to bring them in-house and hire them part-time, which is not what a service that we offer, or there may be somebody with a smaller budget that wants to work with a freelancer rather than a big business. So I'm going to delete those out. Okay, Google AdWords Experts India. We're not in India, so I can delete that one. High expert PPC sounds a little bit weird. Delete that one. Local PPC company, these see quite good. Low cost PPC management, I'm gonna delete that. We don't want to target people that want that are looking for low cost. Outsourced to us, that's fine. Outsourced. PPC agency in the Midlands, that's not near lead, so I'm gonna delete that one. The SEO ones, we're just looking to promote our PPC slash AdWords campaigns. I'll delete those. PPC in digital marketing. So they don't sound like they're looking for a firm or a company or a service. So I'm also going to delete that out of our list. Pricing. I can say if there's another one for India there, just delete that out. SEO again, some more SEO. Top PPC, white label, not really what I'm looking for at the minute, so I'll delete those out. So my list of you know over 100 keywords has been refined to around 87. And that all seems quite good. So I'm just gonna look to make sure we've got rid of all the SEO, which we have. India popped up a few times. Seems to be gone. Okay, that seems much better now. Right, so just a few things here in terms of 
the different you know the way that I look at the different quality of keywords so these ones here about people looking for the best normally quite good anybody that use things like top 10 best keywords like that are normally quite good so there was the best keywords there we had a top rated here they're normally quite good keywords to be done depending on what you're selling but people are looking for cheap or affordable things so if you are offering a service you don't really want to be selling to people that are looking for a cheap service but on the flip side if you are selling products and your products are cheap you might want to pay for those cheap keywords so something to think about there best people looking for the best which we've got here we don't want obviously anybody looking for anything free can we move all the free keywords if anybody's looking to download something for powerpoints and they're looking for information, they're not really looking to buy, so you can remove those keywords. Okay, now that we have our list of keywords, the next step is to organize our keywords into ad groups. Ad groups are groups of keywords that have a related theme. So we'll start to talk you through that now. The first step in this spreadsheet is to add a new column, normally to the left of the keyword, and label that ad group. And now we can start grouping them into separate groups. So looking through here, what I see is a lot of, I think the first level of grouping will be whether they're looking for AdWords or whether they're looking for PPC services. So I'm gonna go text contains AdWords. Here. And these are all my AdWords keywords, so I'm going to group those together. Another one is PPC. So another one is PPC. Now, so these ones that say AdWords PPC are already grouped into the AdWords group. As AdWords is the most specific keyword in that search term, I'm gonna keep that. Because PPC could be Bing, it could be Social Ads PPC, it could be Google PPC. So that's the more broader keyword being used. But AdWords is the most specific, so I'm gonna keep this keyword in the AdWords camp in the AdWords ad group. And then these I will label PPC. Okay. So we have AdWords keywords here, PPC keywords here, um, and then here is our paid search. I can see and Google Ads. So that's my group of keywords there. Okay, the next thing I can see is that a lot of people are looking for experts, companies, agencies, consultants, experts, management, managers. So I'm gonna start grouping those keywords together now. So in the keyword column, I'm going to look for all the keywords containing expert. Right, so a little top tip. When creating the ad groups, I normally separate the different levels of grouping by a little hyphen. So just like that, AdWords and then Expert. Just like that. It just breaks it up, makes it easy to read and review. Expert.
Okay, we had the company. Company. Agency. Agency. Okay. Consultant. And if I remove the filter, I can look at the ones that have already been done. And I can see the ones that haven't been done. So management, I'm going to put management and managers together, I think, on this one. Because they're fairly similar. Again, if they've already been done, don't worry about them, they're in a group. So for example, this one, Google AdWords Management Agency. This keyword could go in the management ad group or the agency ad group. To be honest, I don't think it matters too much. You just need to commit to one ad group and keep it that way. If you choose to as well, you can always move them at a later date and test them in both ad groups to see which one does better. Okay. So I'm looking down here to see which ones haven't been done. I can see this one needs to be done. So this is company. Put my filter back on. And then looking at keywords that contain the word company. Do. So this is company and companies. They're fairly similar, so I'll put them together. Okay. Right, we've got outsource PPC. So for this one, I'm actually going to change these to all to be outsourced. That's quite a specific sort of term there. Nice group of keywords together. Right, we've got firm, firm. I may just do this right on here. Oops. Some more outsourcing. Agency. Got another firm. Okay, looks like we're done. So now, if I, I'm going to just sort my keywords, so if I go to data and then custom sort and then go. Go to data and then sort the range. I'm going to sort column A, which is the ad groups, A to Z, and then column B, which is the keywords, A to Z, and then press sort. Now I can see here I've got all my AdWords agency keywords here, my company keywords, my consultants, my experts, AdWords management, like so. Google Ads Expert. So if we look at the name of the ad group, we can normally guess what sort of keywords will be in the ad group. So looking at the PPC Agency ad group, we have keywords like PPC Ad Agency, PPC Agency, PPC Digital Agency. And I just noticed actually Audit Agency. I'm probably going to remove because we're looking to run this campaign to manage people's Google Ads campaigns. 
It'd be nice to audit campaigns, we do do that, but it's not really the, the focus of this campaign. So I'm actually just gonna delete that one also. PPC agency, PPC marketing agency. If we come down to the ad group for PPC firm, you'll see that we have PPC advertising firm, PPC marketing firm, top PPC firms as the keywords. So that's quite nicely organized. Okay, now that we have planned our keywords that we're going to appear for, we have created some ad groups. We now need to create a campaign. To do that, we're going to add another column called campaign. And then quite simply, I'm gonna call this campaign AdWords. And then quite often I put the focus of the campaign in the name, so lead generation. So this is our AdWords lead generation campaign. And we'll just drag that down to the bottom. So within the campaign, we're going to have these ad groups. Within this ad group are these keywords. Within this ad group are these keywords. The next steps involve setting what are called match types for the keywords. Before we do that, let's talk about what match types are and how they work. Now that you're armed with a list of keywords, it's important that we discuss another component to how keywords work. Every keyword has the ability to have settings applied to it. These settings are called match types and they help you control how closely the keyword needs to match a person's search term in order to trigger your ad. Within AdWords, there are five main types of keyword options. They are called Broad Match, Broad Match Modifier, Phrase Match, Exact Match and Negative Match. When you go to add your keywords to an ad group, you'll have the opportunity to select these matching options. We'll be discussing setting these up in your campaigns, but for now, let's talk about what each of these five main match types means. Firstly, Broad Match. So the first match type we're going to discuss is Broad Match. And by default, every keyword is a broad match. This means that your ads show for things that match your keyword or for words that are closely related to your keywords. When you start out, broad match is going to capture the most people, but it might also bring in a lot of irrelevant searches. Let's look at some examples. A broad keyword for women's hats will match for the following search terms. Women's hats, drawings of women's hats, women's caps, hats for girls. You can see here how this is very broad. If you try and sell women's hats, you wouldn't necessarily want to be matching for drawings of women's hats per se. The next keyword match type is broad match modifiers. And these are gonna be signified in your ad groups by adding a plus sign directly in front of your keyword. You'll see here that I want to add the keyword to Google, I would add plus women's plus hats. By doing this, you're telling Google that the keyword directly following the plus sign has to appear in the user's search query exactly as targeted. It's also important to note with the broad match modifier keywords that they can still be in any order. Now this might still yield some irrelevant clicks, but it'll get you closer to what you want to appear for. Let's look at some examples. If I added into Google plus women's plus hats as my keyword, I'm going to match with the following hats for women, drawing of women's hats, both of these will match, but I will not match for women's caps. The next match type is phrase match type. This is a keyword setting that allows your ads to show only when someone's searches includes the exact phrase of the keyword or close variations of the exact phrase of your keyword with additional words before or after. Whereas with broad match modifier, the words can be in any order. With phrase match, they have to be in the same order. The phrase match keyword, women's hats, will cause your ad to show if someone searches for buy women's hats or women's hats on sale. Exact match. This is where your ads may show on searches that match the exact term or close variations of the exact term. So the example keyword women's hats will only show for the keyword or the search term women's hats. Exact match keywords are signified by the square bracket symbol either side of the keyword. So for example, if you have an exact match keyword which is women's hats, You'll only appear when the search term is women's hats. Now, let's round up everything that we've just been through. In the first column, you will see the different match types. Broad match, broad match modifier, phrase match, and exact match. In the second column, you will see the symbol that has to be shown with the keyword to signify what the match type is. 
For example, if you want to use a broad match modifier keyword, put a plus before each of the keywords. If you want to have a phrase match type, you put quotation marks either side of the keyword. And if you want exact match, you put the square brackets either side of the keywords. In the third column, you'll see how the keywords look in an AdWords account. With the plus symbols, the quotation marks and square brackets, each signifying the different match types. In the final column, you'll see some example searches for each of the match types. For example, women's hats on broad match will show for buy ladies hats. Women's hats on broad match modifier will show for hats for women. Women's hats on phrase match will show for buy women's hats. And finally, on exact match, it will only show when someone searches women's hats. Now, back to building our AdWords campaigns. For the purpose of this video, we're going to use exact match keywords to make sure that we pull in highly relevant traffic related to our keywords. In time, we can open up our best keywords onto phrase match and broad match modifier to pull in more traffic. But for now, we want to tightly control the searches that we appear on. Now that we have developed our understanding of match types, we're going to set the match types for these keywords to exact match. To do that, I will insert a column to the right of the keywords and call it match type. And in there, I will enter the match type that I would like this keyword to be exact match is what we will use. Like so. Next, we need to set the landing page for our keywords. So if someone searches this keyword and clicks on our ad, where will they land? In AdWords, this is called the final URL. Right, to find the URL, I'm going to go to my website. Go to my Google AdWords management landing page, our web page, copy the URL into here. I'm going to drag that down to there. Okay, now we have our campaign, our ad group, our keyword, our match type and our final URL. We're now going to upload this into AdWords and create our first campaign. At this stage, we do not need this anymore, so I normally just delete this out. And there we go. So the finished spreadsheet should look something like this. When creating campaigns, I always use Google AdWords Editor AdWords Editor is a free downloadable application for managing your Google Ads campaigns. It might take time to learn at first, but Google Ads Editor can really help you save time and make it easier to make changes in bulk. To download Google AdWords Editor, simply search on Google, Google AdWords Editor, scroll down, and the top listing here is for Google Ads Editor. It's a no-cost downloadable application that lets you work offline and make bulk changes quickly and easily. The home page looks like this, simply download Google Ads Editor. Okay, I've already got it downloaded, so I will now open it up. Okay, once you've downloaded AdWords Editor, you will need to add the account. So to do that, press account at the top. Next, click add. And you need to open your browser to sign in. Once you've entered your signing credentials, you will visit this screen, which wants to access your Google account. Click Allow. Next, take this code here and paste it into your Google AdWords editor. Press OK. Download all campaigns from your account, which there probably is none at the minute, as we know. OK, 
Okay. Now we're going to upload our campaign into AdWords via Google AdWords Editor. Now we're going to take our spreadsheet and use Google AdWords Editor to upload our campaigns to Google Ads. So, if we go back to our spreadsheet, just here, and then copy the campaign, ad group, keyword, match type, and final URL. Copy those. Go back to Google AdWords Editor. And then here is our Manage panel, where we can look at the accounts, look at the campaigns, look at the ad groups, keywords and targeting. If you click here, that expands to keywords, negative keywords. You've got further down here, you've got location targeting. Just there. Um, gender targeting, age targeting. Then next you've got the ads here, which we'll upload shortly. And ad extensions, which again we'll upload shortly. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add the keywords to our account. So the best way to do this is start with keywords. If you add the keywords, it will create the campaign and the ad group to put the keywords into. So you can create the whole campaign in one upload. If you start with campaigns, you have to create a campaign. Then you have to create an ad group. Then you have to put the keywords into the ad groups and it just takes more time. I definitely recommend starting with keywords, as you'll see now. So we select keywords here in the left column and then we come over to here where we can make multiple changes. If you select make multiple changes, we can then now um, paste the text from our clipboard into this view here. And if we look here, it's got campaign, ad group, keyword, match type has been changed to criterion type for some reason, I don't know, uh, but that's normal, that's what it needs to be. And then final URL. So our data includes the columns and campaigns for ad groups. Yes, it does. So that's fine. This is what you want to select. This is our information here. And then we simply just process our information. And this tells us that one campaign has been added, 17 ad groups with 85 keywords. We'll finish and review changes. So what we can see here is there is a campaign with different ad groups. If we look at the ad groups, we can see, yes, this is what our spreadsheet looked like. And our keywords are organized into tightly themed ad groups. So now we press keep here. Okay, so we have our campaign, we have our ad group, we have our keywords. The next thing is to create some ad copy for the campaigns. Okay, so there is a few ways to do this. You can obviously do it in Google Ads. You can do it in the spreadsheet format if you want, or you can do it through Google AdWords Editor. I prefer to use Google AdWords Editor. So if we go through to here to create the ads, we need to go to the ads section of the manage panel. So we'll minimize the keywords and we'll select ads and expanded text ads. Now we can see that there's no ads in these ad groups. So to create, create an ad, select an ad group in our campaign and then select add, add expanded text ad. And then here we have an empty space for where we can write our new ad copy. So before we get into writing our ads, I want to explain a few things about the anatomy of ad copy. Okay, before we get into writing our ad copy, I want to go through the anatomy of the Google search ad. The Google search ad is made up of many components that all come together to create the Google ads that you see in front of you here. So firstly, we have the headlines. With Google ads, you have the ability to write three separate headlines. Headline one, headline two, headline three. Next, there is descriptions. These are here, these are called the ad descriptions and there's two description lines. This is the first line here. And this is the second line here. Finally, to make up the Google ad, there is what's called path one, which is here and path two, which is there. 
path one being advertising, path two being agency in this example. They are the, they are the core components of a Google ad. Headline one, two and three, description line one and two, path one and path two. At a minimum, you will need to create an ad that has all these features. However, with AdWords, you are able to also add what are known ad extensions, and these come in many different forms. In this example here, we can see call-out extensions, award-winning agency, digital social experts, certified sales coaches. We also have what's called structured snippets, which are web design, paid advertising, inbound marketing. We also have the location extension, which is the New York office here. We also have a call extension, which displays their phone number. And we also have what are called site links. These are the links to other pages on the website that can be shown underneath the main ad, which help with navigating users to relevant landing pages. I would recommend using both the core components of the headline, the descriptions, path one and path two, and combining them with your ad extensions such as call outs, call extensions, site links, and address extensions. For example, if this ad was just two lines long, it would stand out, it would look quite good, but it looks a lot better when it has all the ad extensions showing as it's, it takes up a lot more space on the Google search result. Ads that take up more space have a better click-through rate. And ads that look like this generally look more professional, which will help build trust and generate a higher conversion rate from your traffic. Now that we've been through the anatomy of a Google search ad, we're going to get back to building these ads in our account. Now that we've been through the different features of ads, let's look at creating our first ads for our campaign. So what I would do here is, as mentioned, we want three to four ads per ad group. I'm going to create four different ads just like so. Now, a top tip is to often use some of the text from your landing page on your ad copy. If it's good enough for your website, it should be good enough for your ads, but also it helps create consistent messaging across the user journey. So the message that they see on the ad is reflected on the landing page, which generally helps for a better conversion rate of traffic. So if we visit our Bidmark page here, so this seems like quite a good start here, so I'm going to copy this. Let's have a look, that's good work. Can I get it quick? Okay, let's just take this one. This will be for our first ad. I was going to drop that into description line one and then come back to that. That can be the second one. This can be the third one. Okay, there's those three have been used. So let's go with this one. Okay, so you'll see here that we're over the character limit on this one by just one. So Let's see if we can make this a little bit smaller. It says here, so we are a Google Ads agency in Leeds. We are happy to support you on all things AdWords. So if I just put a space in there. Yep. Okay. That's good. So this is 110, so it needs to be reduced by 20. So a top tip is to always replace the word and with the symbol. Look at that, need eight more. So our AdWords management will maximize your results and help you increase your overall return from AdWords. And that. Just three more. So let's look at AdWords management. That will maximize results.
Okay, that's fine. Let us take the weight off your shoulders with our professional Google AdWords management services. Service. Just need one more. Let's take the weight off your shoulders with a professional QPC management service. Professional services. Okay. So here we have four different description line ones. So I'm going to actually use the same description line too in all the ads. So our in-house AdWords management team are fully certified. Please please find hundreds of campaigns. Our AdWords management team are fully certified with the experience of handling hundreds of campaigns. AdWords managers are fully certified with experience of handling hundreds of campaigns. Yep. So if you look now, we are a Google AdWords agency in Leeds. We are here to support you in all things AdWords. Our AdWords managers are fully certified with experience of handling hundreds of campaigns. Okay. Let's have a look. Okay, so with ad copy, we want to make sure that we've got a strong call to action. Whatever you want people to do, you need to ask them to do it. So whether that's buy now or shop now, for us, it's lead generation. So for in the headline three, I'm gonna make sure that we use the call to action of get a quote. Get a quote or contact us for a free. Quote. Okay, so we've got headline three, description line one, and description line two. We now just need headline one and two. So my top tip here is to always make sure that headline one reflects the keywords in the ad group. So in this ad group here for AdWords agency, the keyword one of the keywords is AdWords PPC agency. So I'm going to make sure that my ad copy has the, the keyword, that keyword in. So I'm gonna put here, AdWords PPC Agency. I've got enough room, I think, to put leads in. So AdWords PPC Agency leads. Contact us for a free quote. So we've got AdWords PPC Agency Leads, contact us for a free quote. We are Google AdWords Agency in Leeds. We're here to support you on all things AdWords. Our AdWords managers are fully certified with the experience of handling hundreds of campaigns. Okay, now we just need headline two. AdWords Let's have a look at the inspiration here That could be quite a good one Get a free marketing assessment. So I was going to make the more title case here. Audit. Free audit.
I'm actually just going to change this one, I think. I quite like this. Read carrot a free market assessment to look into your business pain points, decision making process, recruit marketing. Okay, quite like that one. So AdWords PPC Agency Leads, get a free marketing audit, contact us for a free audit. We carry out a free marketing audit to look into your current marketing and we recommend ways to improve the quality of leads to your website moving forwards. Just make sure I fix this we'll stop here. Okay, I'll have to remove this. Okay, so I think if you were creating your own campaigns, you'd want to spend a little bit more time making sure that the ad copy is as strong as it could be. But for the purpose of this video, um, I think that will do for now. So we also need to put in the final URL here, which is going to be the same as the keywords. So you don't really have to do this if the keywords have got a, a URL. It doesn't really matter what the ad URL is, but I generally just for housekeeping like to make everything correct and tidy there. So we've now got four ads in this ad group here for AdWords Agency. Now what I normally do is I will copy these and I'll paste them into the AdWords company. Oh sorry, there's just one more thing. So we have a headline, we've got a headline two and three, description line one and two. Let's use path one here. So path one is quite simply the display URL you see down here. It's a URL for display purposes. It doesn't actually have to match up with the, the final URL down here. So a top tip for this is basically to put the keywords being searched into the, display, into the path one. So this is the AdWords agency ad group. I'll just put AdWords agency in the display URL. Right, AdWords Agency. Okay, next I will select all, copy, and then paste these ads. So I do Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and then go to the next ad group and Control V to paste. So this is the AdWords Company ad group. So I'll just change this to Company. And then up here, company. And this way, I'm making sure that the ads are relevant to the keyword being searched. So if someone's searching for an AdWords agency, it says AdWords agency. If they're looking for an AdWords company, it says AdWords company. But the headline two and description line one often stays the same. Okay, so next, AdWords. Consultants. Up there. Right, okay, so in this example, AdWords Consultants is too long, it's over the character limit. So what I can do is I can move it, move it to path two. So AdWords for slash consultants, that works well as well. So 
So copy, paste. Bits. Google Ads Experts leads in the Google Ads Expert ad group. Google ads path to experts so this is the paid search agency ad group paid search agency leads paid search agency So I'll copy this paid search one here and then just switch agency and company. Paid search experts. Experts. So PPC agency. PPC agency. Company. Company. Consultants. Consultants. Experts. Experts. Firm. Firm. Almost there. Management. Outsourced PPC services. And then BPC services. Like so. Okay. So now we have our campaigns, we have our ad groups, we have our keywords here, and we have the ad copy to go with that. And we're almost ready to post. So, just a few things first. Um, is to look at these uh, issues and these errors that are appearing here. So a little red flag means there's something to have a look at. A little yellow flag is there's something you might want to have a look at. It's not necessarily a problem. Um, it's worth just checking that the uh, there's no serious errors there. So first of all, if we select the campaign at the top here, we can see that the error is with the campaign. So we select campaigns. And it says here, our budget is invalid. Change your bud budget to a positive value. So we can... If we come over here, we can see where we can edit the selected campaign. So this is the selection here. So you, if you select a campaign here, you can edit the campaign here. If you select the ads, you can edit the ads over here. Select, select the keywords, you can edit these keywords over here. So we'll go back to the campaign and then we'll go to the edit panel over here. And it's a set of budget. So we're going to go with £10 a day. And that removes the error there. You can also see that the, the yellow flag here is to do with the bid strategy. Um, it's using manual bidding. It suggests to use a fully automated bidding strategy to bid more efficiently. Um, for now, I'm going to keep it to manual CPC. So I'll just press ignore. And the flag disappears. If I scroll further down here, I can see that there's no other errors. So that's all okay. Um, but it tells me down here, you don't have conversion tracking enabled. So we're going to get on to conversion tracking further on in this video. Um, so for now, we know that we're just going to press ignore. 
Um, we're not using, using audience lists. Um, so that's like remarketing audiences. Um, maybe that's for another video another day. You can just press ignore. So it's, it's asking us to put add extensions in, which is again something that we're going to look at further on in this video. So we'll just press ignore for now. This is more add extensions, site links, ignore. Structured snippets, we're going to add them shortly. We can just ignore for now. Okay, and that's all of the issues and errors removed from there. If we go to the ad groups, um, we can see that all the ad groups have a little error there. So um, we're going to press Control A to select all the ad groups. And it says that our ad group doesn't have any bids. So we set our budget to £10 a day, but we need to set our bid, so how much we're prepared to pay for each click. So to do that, it's the default max CPC here. Um, and again, we'll put that to £5. So again, this is based on that keyword research. You remember going back, there was the top of the page bid um, max and the top of the page bid minimum. Um, I remember that actually being quite high. So for these keywords, I might actually put nearer £8. Okay. Um, so this is, if you look at this here, so Search Network Ad Group has expanded text ads. Those are the ones that we just created. But it doesn't currently include a responsive search ad. So responsive search ads are another ad type, which again, we can look at maybe for another day. Um, they're quite advanced, um, but for now, the expanded text ads will do just fine. So we're going to ignore that suggestion. And again, all the errors have, have been removed. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at some of the errors with the keywords. And it's actually the location targeting, and it's set to the United Kingdom. So, um, let's have a look. That seems okay, actually. So, we, I think we can ignore that one for now. We're going to look at the ads, the ad extensions, location targeting, a few other things actually within Google Ads because I think it's actually a bit easier to do that those steps in Google Ads compared to AdWords Editor. AdWords Editor is just good for the bulk changes like uploading lots of keywords or lots of ads but making individual changes to locations to one campaign I think we should use Google Ads for that. Okay so just a few more things that are really quite important so if you have a look here, so we go to the campaigns and we look at the campaign settings. Our budget is £10, that's fine. Budget, so the status, let's just keep the campaign paused for now. Because we're not quite ready to go live. So we're going to post it paused. Please don't post it live just yet. So the budget is £10 and it's a daily budget. Manual CPC strategy, so we're going to, we're going to carry out the bid management ourselves. And then the campaign type is a search campaign. And then this one here includes search partners. We need to disable that. And then in include the display network. We definitely need to disable that. If you have this enabled, you write, you know, the, the focus of this campaign is to appear on Google search results, not on the search partner results, and definitely not on the display network. So we need to disable this. Start date is fine. There's no end date. Devices is all devices for now. Um, ad rotation, optimised, prefer the best performing ads. Yep, we can leave that on. And then the delivery method. There's, there's two types of delivery method here. Standard, which is show the ads evenly over the course of the day. Or accelerated would be to show the ads as quickly as possible in that day. If you leave it to standard, your £10 a day budget, for example, will be spent during the day. So you know, £5 in the morning, £5 in the evening. Um, accelerated mean that it could spend the whole £10 in the morning. So for now, I think we'll leave that to standard. Um, we don't need frequency capping and we don't need to look at the language or the location targeting just yet. So that's all fine for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to post this to AdWords. So when posting, there's a couple of steps that you need to follow. The first one is to always, always get recent changes. So the way AdWords Editor works is it downloads all the account information um, to AdWords Editor. 
If, for example, you make some changes in AdWords, you need to pull those changes into AdWords Editor. So if I was in AdWords and I changed the location targeting to, let's say, for example, Leeds, well, as we've just seen, it's still set to the United Kingdom in AdWords Editor. So basically, I just need to make sure that all the changes, all the up-to-date changes in Google Ads are pulled in to Google AdWords Editor. So as a rough rule of thumb, always get recent changes for all campaigns. So of course for this video, it's a new campaign, there is not going to be any recent changes, but I definitely, as a good rule of thumb, make sure you always get recent changes. So that's done now, it's quite quick. And then now we're going to post the changes to AdWords. And that's up here in the top right hand corner, post changes to this account. So we'll go with all the campaigns, and it'll basically tell us what's it got, what it is going to post. So it's going to post one campaign, 17 ad groups, 85 keywords, one location, 68 text ads. Seems about right, so we'll post. Right, so that's all finished posting now. Just click close. So now, for the remaining steps, we're going to go across to our AdWords account. Right, so here we are back at our AdWords account and we have the good old keyword research. So we, we want to, we don't need to do more keyword research, we want to start managing and optimising our campaigns. So we're just going to close the keyword plan. We're going to go back again, top left. And then here you will see that that campaign is now in our Google AdWords account. Again, it's paused because we're not ready to go live just yet. There's a couple of things that we need to do. Okay, now that we have the campaign in our account, there's just a couple of things left to do. But you'll find your campaign the most left column. Sometimes it's minimized, like so. So you might need to click the arrow to pop it out here. This is our campaign here with all our ad groups here. So a good way to look at this is to basically systematically work your way through each of these different tabs in the second column to make sure everything is set up the way you'd like it to be. So, recommendations, once you get going live on your campaign, a couple of uh, recommendations will, will appear here. So, when pause this campaign, start showing ads is a recommendation. And then set up a payment method to start showing ads. So there's two in there already. But what, what you might start getting is kind of optimization about how to improve your ad copy, um, what keyword bids to change, it can be quite useful. Um, however, obviously for now, there's nothing really there because we haven't really started our campaigns. So next we go to ad groups. Not too much here to do at the moment, but we can simply see that all our ad groups are here. So if you want to look at the impressions and the clicks and the click through rates, the cost at ad group level, you can see it here, which is quite useful. So obviously there's like there's many keywords. Sometimes it can be easier to review performance at ad group level. There's only 17 ad groups, so you get a really top level view of the different of the performance of all the different keywords grouped together. So, not too much to do there. If we go to ads, we can see that we've got the ads in the account, which is good. But up here is the ad extensions. This is how you can view and add new ad extensions. So if we click here to extensions, you can see that we currently don't have any ads extensions. So, um, what are ad extensions? So. Basically, the way is to improve your ads by adding more details about your business, such as phone numbers, locations, special features, website links, and more. If we just do a live search now, we'll have a look at some example ad extensions. So, buy Nike trainers. So here, we can see some examples of what are known as site links. These are really good for making your ads stand out as you'll see compared to this one, this Sports Direct ad here, where you've got one line of text, two line, three line, the ad extensions can basically double the amount of ad space that you take up on the Google search results page. So you've gone from you know, three to four lines of, of ad copy text to you know, seven or eight lines there. So it's a really good way of standing out. Site link can appear like this with a description. 
they can also appear like this without a description. What else do we have? So this is a structured snippet, so highlights. Looks like a structured snippet, might not be, but we'll have a look at a second. Highlights, we offer high quality and innovative products for 2003. So, no, this is a structured snippet, it's so a brands. The Nike Lab Jordan, Nike by You, Hurley, Nike SB, Nike Sportswear. That is a structured snippet, a snippet of information. Um, and the reason why it's called stru structured is because there's only certain features you can have, like brands that you sell, neighbourhoods that you sell in, and there's a couple of the other ones that we'll go through shortly. Um, but it's quite structured in how you build it. Um, it's not as it's not as kind of free flowing as the ad copy is, where you can literally write what you want essentially. Okay, so the first one here is to create site links. We can create a site link extension. The site link extension links directly to a specific page on your website. It could be store hours, specific products, contact forms. When someone clicks or taps on the links, they skip right to that information that they need. So if we create some site link extensions, we come through to this option here where we can create site link one, site link two, site link three, and site link four. Um, it's recommended to have four site links at least. Um, however, as with anything in Google Ads, add five or six in and test them all to see which is the best performing. So, if we have a look at some potential site links for our Google AdWords agency campaign. So, if you imagine that somebody was typing in PPC agency services leads, um, what, what site links would be relevant to them? So, if we go here, I think the about us could be quite good. So they can click the ad and come through to the service landing page, but they might want to find out about our company. So we'll have um, an about us site link. And again, we can use some, we can use some of the text from the website. For the description so here it tells you the character limits 35 and 35 so it's a little bit less than the descriptions um, in the ad copy mm -hmm. so about us we're committed to providing the best quality of adwords management links through to our company page um, we could have testimonials So, say about us. Um, I think it's always good to have a contact site link. Again, it's like a call to action, it gets them in the right frame of mind. Okay, and um, maybe something about other services. A bit of a cross sell slash upsell.
Okay, so there's four potential site links that we can add to our campaign. So now that we've um, filled in all the information, we're just going to press save. And there's our four site links there. Okay, next. Um, so that kind of wizard has just disappeared. So if you want to add more add extensions, you can press here, the, the blue plus add extension. And then, as with anything AdWords, we're going to systematically work through all of the ad extensions and we're going to add any that are relevant. So, for example, there might not be an affiliate location extension to add, so you might you might not need to add that one. App extension, where well, we don't have an app, so we don't need to add that one. Promotion, there's no promotion currently running, so we don't need to add that one. I think definitely the three main ones, or four main ones, are at the top there. Site links, call outs, structured snippets, and the call extension. So if we now go to call out extension, we can start to add four different call outs. So let's just have a look at some things that we could um, we could shout out about. So if we go to maybe our about us page, so professionally handled. So professionally handled. Results driven, data led, data led and experienced. that right experienced and um, save and then we can also go to structured snippets so this is the one that I was discussing earlier um, and you see here that we need to add a structured snippet extension to the campaign and we're going to create a new one in English so you can see here there's only these are the different headers that you can choose so brands courses, destinations, featured hotels, the models of the cars you might sell, neighbourhoods that you that you can uh, work in, styles of different tops, types of different tops. And um, this is why it's called structured because you can only really choose from these. For us, we're going to go with neighborhoods so we're going to talk about some of the local areas that we work in which is Leeds okay. New York so some of our local clients are in those areas and then press save so we've got site links call out structure snippet extensions there next up we've got the call extension we're going to create a new call extension. So we're going to add it to our campaign. It's going to be a new one. We're just going to change this to United Kingdom. And then we're going to put our phone number in, which is up here. Copy that. And it will appear here. Okay. So, call reporting. So that's turned on. So basically, if somebody clicks this, number and then makes a call Google will track it and it will report back to you in your conversions in your account you can also set a bid adjustment to increase bids and um, if, if Google suspects that somebody's going to make a call so advanced options you can have it just show in mobile if you want and um, you can have scheduling so Maybe to show it only Monday to Friday 9 to 5 when you're in the office um, and turn it off when you're not in the office so that it drives them to your website. Um, there's some advanced options there that you can play around with. That to be honest, we're going to leave for now. So save. 
there we go. Um, message extension, I'll just talk you through it. I'm not going to add this one. You can create a new message extension, um, send us a text message for, for more information. So if somebody taps on that, it will open up their messaging um, platform and it will automatically send you this message to your phone. And you can you can you can have a default customer message here, and then an auto reply. Pretty cool. If that works for your business. The location extension. So this works off your Google My Business account. So if you don't have one of those set up, maybe go away and have a look at getting one of those set up. Um, you can select your location there. Where we're based. Continue. Okay, um, price extension. So if you, this is really good if you're selling specific products. So um, we can add to our campaign um, brands that you stock or um, locations, um, services. So we could go services for us. The currency, you set the currency. Um, and then a the price qualifier. So you could say from. And then you could say PPC services from £500 per month and then put it to the PPC page for example you need to put the URL in there um, manage so we manage your campaign no. expertly managed it look like this so below the ad, you get the PPC services from £500 a month, expertly managed. And then to add the next one, you click here. And then this could be social media from £800 a month. Um, profile management. And then add your social media page URL here. And then further down, another one could be SEO from 1,200 per month. Description, high ranking services, SEO page URL here. You put your page URL in there and you can add two more and then save. Um, I'm going to leave that one for now. Yeah, the others are uh, pretty much not that used very often. You can create a promotion extension for a certain occasion. So because we're a service, we're not going to really use it for us. But if you were having a back to school sale in the UK, you can say £20 off. all items and then put in your back back to school you can put in your home page if the offer was on there promotion details um, none 20 pound of all items on this one and then you can save it under review so um, what else have we got? So yeah, app extension if you've got an app or uh, the affiliate location extension. So if you've got um, other sorts of locations, specific locations, so uh, you might have more than one location, uh, you can add them in there. And that's our extensions. Okay, so now that we've got our campaign, got our keywords, got our ad groups, we've got some ads and some ad extensions. And the next step is you to keep working through uh, this tab to make sure that they're all set up exactly how we want them. So 
Um, if we go to the next tab here, landing pages. So once the campaigns go live, you will start to see information based on the different landing pages here. You can look at the different click-through rates, the amount of impressions, um, but what you might see is that there's a certain page that's kind of like really slow to load, or maybe the, there's a high balance rate of a certain page, and um, you can use that data to optimize your landing pages. Then on the next tab, what you see here is keywords. So once the campaigns go live, you'll see impressions, clicks, click-through rates, cost per click, and cost data here. And then you can start to see how many clicks each of the keywords have got. Next tab is audiences. So we don't have any audiences set to our campaign just yet. Uh, it's quite an advanced feature, not something that you need to get started with straight away. But if you come to here, you can maybe add um, remarketing audiences. So this is remarketing audiences. So this is basically people that have been on your website. And um, you can add those. Um, there's also, if it was, you can also add what's called in-market audiences. So Google basically groups these people, you know, people that are interested in advertising and marketing services. You can add those to your campaign. And basically you can just expand the reach of your campaigns to different audiences. Next one is demographics. So we can look at the age of people searching. So this is just this is actually on the ad group view. If we just up here you can switch it to campaign view. And then here we'll get information on the different stats for the different ages just here. Um, and what you might find is that a certain age range underperforms and then you can you can turn it off. So we go back to the ad group view. You might say, well, 18 to 24 year olds, I don't want to show my ad to. So you can actually start to exclude them, which is pretty cool. Um, you can also do the same for gender. If we switch this to campaign view to get you can have a look at the, the top level, female and male. You'll see impressions and clicks, click through rates, cost per clicks and cost. Um, and if you wanted to exclude a certain gender, we can go back to the ad group view and start excluding females if we'd like to. Go back to campaign view. So just to explain what unknown is here. So quite often from what I see, maybe 30-40% of the data will fall into the unknown category. And the way Google know, the, the way Google works that out is for example, I'm logged in up here. I've just regi registered for an account and I told them that I was male um, and I put my date of birth in also. So Google now knows that I'm a male and it knows my age. So when I'm searching as I'm logged in, you know, for example here, AdWords Age to London, I'm actually logged in up here. So it'll know that I am, you know, a male and it'll know my age. So I'll get categorized into the male, but if people aren't logged in, they get put into the unknown section. So you can't really do anything about that, um, but what you can do is get a little bit of information from the males and females you can use to optimise your campaigns once the data starts to accumulate. Household income as well. And there's a few more here, so you can look at all the different some combinations. So females that are not a parent in the top 10%, you can get some different information there. So that can be quite interesting and just is a way to find some information that you can use to uh, develop and, and build your campaigns. So underneath demographics is settings. Now let's have a look here. So campaign name, yep, yeah, that seems fine. It's paused at the minute, that's fine. No goals selected, that's okay. Networks is the Google search network. If you remember, we untick the search partners and the display network. Definitely recommend you do that. Um, okay, now the location targeting is set to the United Kingdom and we're going to change that now. So I'm going to enter another location here and I'm going to target my campaign to Leeds in England. Target there. I'm going to save that. Okay, language is English, £10 a day, manual CPC. Start date whenever we turn it on, doesn't need to have an end date on this campaign. And if we look at the additional settings, so conversions, 
telling us that we need to set up conversion tracking for this account. So at the end of this video, I'm going to talk you through conversion tracking because it's one of the most important parts of AdWords. I definitely would, wouldn't recommend you turn your campaign on without conversion tracking on. So conversion tracking tells you when there's been a lead or a sale through your website that's been generated via AdWords. So if you are spending money on AdWords and you can't see if it's converting, um, number one, you know, you want to see whether it's working or not. But number two, you're actually able to see which keywords generated that conversion or which ad groups generated that conversion. And once you see which keywords and ads are working, you can spend more money on those keywords and ads, which will get you more conversions. If you don't know which keyword is converting, you're not gonna be able to optimize your campaigns effectively. If you imagine that every keyword is like a salesperson in a call center, and this is the only salesperson generating sales for your business, well, you're paying for these guys to you know to, to work for you. They're not generating any sales. So effectively you can remove you can pause the keywords and then you can only leave the leave the keywords on that are generating your leads or sales. And then that way you can spend more on the keywords which are generating business for you and less on keywords which are not generating business for you. So conversion tracking very important and we're going to talk through that at the end of the video. So ad rotation, um, you can basically there's different settings here. You can rotate the ads indefinitely, which means it'll show all you know, the three or four ads that we wrote. It'll show them evenly, um, but I prefer to keep to only show the best ads. So optimize, prefer best performing ads, and leave that on there. Click save. So these things are quite advanced. You don't need to worry about them too much for now. But campaign URL options. You know, if you're looking at setting up. A tracking template you can add it here but for now the tracking that we're going to use is Google AdWords conversion tracking combined with Google Analytics tracking so we don't need to append our URLs with any sort of other tracking template so we can save that for now um, dynamic search ads is a different campaign type so dynamic search ads target relevant searches automatically so you create a campaign you put your domain in there Google serves your ads based on searches which it thinks are relevant. But for now, we want to just, you know, we've chosen our keywords, we've chosen our ads, and we're going to go down that route for now. So we don't need to worry about the dynamic search ads at the moment. Click save, or we'll click cancel. And then IP exclusions. So if you want to exclude an IP from seeing your ads, uh, you can place it in here. We don't need to do that just now. Okay, so working our way down this middle column here, we've got locations next. And we can see that it's set to Leeds, um, United Kingdom, and that's where we want our ads to show, so that's fine. And then ad schedule. So this is where we can choose the days of the week and the times of day that we want our ads to show. So every business has different times of day and day of week which are busy for them. I think generally speaking, if you are a B2B company, so if you order a, a service to other, or a product to other businesses, quite often it's a Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 is your main times. If you are a B2C business, so you work with you know, selling directly to customers, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 can be a good time, but quite often you see that maybe weekends or evenings are good times because customers are at work during the day and they, they come home and they make purchases on an evening or they research it on a weekend. So yeah, it's, it's totally different for every business. I can't say where how to set your um, your ad schedule, but I think for, for this point, from, from my point of view, um, I'm a B2B, I'm advertising a B2B service. So I'm gonna advertise Monday to Friday, nine to five, so to change your ad schedule, you just press the pencil button here to edit the schedule. And then here you can have a drop down and you can choose which days you want to have your ad schedule. So I'm gonna go Mondays to Fridays and it's nine to five, but I'm actually gonna do just before nine, so 8 a.m. to just after five, 6 p.m. Just in case anyone's kind of in work early or kind of staying a little bit later. So Monday to Friday, eight till six, and I'm gonna save. And you can, this shows me how my ad schedule is set up. So that's a basic kind of way to set up your different ad schedule. Um, you can leave it on all days, but I definitely look at doing some research into your business and finding out when your best times of days are. 
and then setting up your ad schedule accordingly. So devices. So here we can choose the devices that we advertise on and the three options that we have is to just to advertise on computers, mobile phones and tablets. Again, as the data accumulates, you'll you get different information here based on device. So you can see how many times you paid on computer, how many times you paid on mobiles, how many times you paid on tablets. And you can bid up or down accordingly. So if you see, for example, computers is driving you high quality traffic, you can increase your bids by 20% for computers. Or vice versa, if mobile isn't really working very well, you can decrease by 20% for mobile. So if you're spending £10 a bid, you could then say, well, I only want to spend £8 a bid on computers or, or mobiles. So that's how bid adjustments work. Um, and again, from my experience, because it's Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 for the B2B audience, I know that a lot of our customers are searching on their computers. So I actually don't want to advertise on mobile phones. And the way that I can do that is if I go to the bid adjustment, set it to decrease, by 100% and save. That's actually just turned off my ads for mobile. So my, my ads aren't gonna show on mobile searches. That way my budget is gonna be entirely spent on computers and tablets. I could turn off tablets as well if I want to. There we go. So now I've just got a desktop only campaign that runs Monday to Friday, nine to five. And that's fine for me. So again, working through this middle column, you, you get the advanced bid adjustments, which is basically you can increase your bids to generate calls. So increase by 20% to generate calls if your business is call driven. Or you could actually say um, decrease bids by 20%. You know, you might want to generate online sales or people filling in your form. And then the last two options here is the change history. So whenever you make a change in AdWords, the change history tracks that change. So this can be quite useful for if you accidentally make a change, you can undo some of the changes here. So this change here is and the tablet bid adjustment set to minus 100. I can actually undo that change. And it says there, change is undone. So if you ever do anything by accident, you can come to the change history and undo it here. And then draft some, draft some experiments. So if you wanted to create a new draft campaign which is similar to your current campaign, so for example you might say I want to create a draft campaign for uh, my AdWords lead generation which is on mobile, you can, create a, you can create an experiment to test that. And then what it'll do is it'll split the traffic 50-50 between the desktop and the mobile and then what you can see here is the results from that experiment so you might actually say well actually mobile traffic is actually quite good um, and you'll see that here in the results and you can actually then say well actually I carried out an experiment to see whether it was desktop traffic or mobile traffic was the best um, and I found out that mobile traffic was the best so then you can apply those changes to this main campaign so it's a good way of carrying out as the name suggests experiments on your campaign you might say, well, I want to keep this campaign, but I want to experiment with changing the landing page to the home page, for example. Well, you can create an experiment for that, and then Google will split the traffic 50-50 between the home page and, in this example, the PPC page. You can look at your, your, your experiment results, um, you know, the, the click-through rates, the, the, which one had the best conversion rate, and then whatever the results tell you, you can apply that change to the whole campaign. Um, again, it's quite advanced. Um, at this stage, if you're setting up a campaign, I'd probably go with what you think is best at the moment and let that run for a bit. So maybe that's something that we'll cover off in a later video. But now we're getting towards the end of this uh, campaign setup. So just to kind of review what I've just been through there is go through this middle column and look at each of the different tabs individually and carry out a, se a series of checks to make sure that it's all expected. So make sure you've got your ads in there make sure you've got your extensions set up, go to your keywords, make sure that they're, they're all set up correctly so it's an exact match keyword, you've got your bids, you've got your final URL, demographics, um, you know, are you targeting certain demographics, whether it's male or female, whether it's older or younger people, go to your settings, make sure all the settings are, are as expected, location targeting, is it targeting the right location, 
ad schedule, is the ad schedule how you want it to be, devices, which devices are you targeting, are you going to set up an, an advanced bid adjustment for calls, um, and once you've been through that and everything's okay, you're pretty much ready to go. Now, there's just one more thing, uh, sorry, two more things to have a look at, and that is to do with, as I mentioned, conversion tracking, and then finally, um, we need to set up the billing um, for our account. So those two features are up here in the tools and settings. So if you select tools and settings and go to conversions. Right, so the conversions is a place where we can see how Google Ads help you achieve your goals. Conversion tracking helps you see which keywords, ads, ad groups and campaigns drive the customer actions that you care about such as purchases, subscriptions, app installs, phone calls and more. So what we need to do is add a conversion here. Right, so we can select the kind of conversions you want to track. Website, so just tracking sales or other actions on your website. App installs and in-app actions. You can track phone calls, so phone calls from your ads on your website. Or you can import conversions from another system, including Google Analytics. What I will do is I will do a separate video on how to set up the conversion tracking but for the purpose of this video I'm going to set up one of the most common um, types of conversions which is a form completion. So if you're an e-commerce website and somebody buys of your website you need to look at sales tracking and revenue tracking. Um, however if you're a lead generation website um, we can set up Right, for now, I'm going to look at one of the most common types of conversions that you can track, and that is people going to a thank you page. So, if you are a lead generation website, um, quite often you want people to fill in a form on your website, and when they submit, I definitely recommend that you set up a thank you page, and you can set you can set tracking up to track people that go to that thank you page. Um, if you are generating sales. You can also have that once people have made a purchase of you that they also land on a thank you page. So for those two things you can track the number of leads and the number of sales that have been through your website. Um, so for example, if we come onto here um, and we fill this in. Test at gmail.com Testing Test and then press send. Once I press send, I'm gonna to go to a thank you page. Thank you for getting in touch. So up here, we've got this contact for slash thank you. So that's my thank you page. I wanna track all people that have clicked on an AdWords ad and then filled in the form and reached this thank you page and that will help me report on how many leads have been generated from my AdWords campaign. And we get to this thank you page. So once we have the thank you URL, we need to use Google Analytics to create what is called a goal. So the goal is for us to get people to fill in our form. So once you've created the goal in Analytics, you will import that goal into your AdWords account. So Here's an example analytics account and all the, all the kind of the data is stored up here but what we need to do is go down to the settings down here, the admin and you get these three columns here and you see here that there's the goals column here and here's a couple of goals that we've already got set up. If we go to new goal, we, we get to the goal setup page. So. What we're going to use in this example is a custom goal or we can actually do, yeah, custom goal. We go custom goal, continue. Give the, the goal a name, so um, form, form completion. And then this is the type here, so for us it's a destination if somebody reaches a certain destination on our website, which is the thank you page, we want to track that as a goal. Equal to. 
there we go. And there's no value associated with this, so we leave that off. And there's no funnel, so we leave that off. And then we press save. And that is here. There we go, farm completion. So it's been set up as a goal. Now we need to go back to the AdWords account. Um, and then we're going to import that goal from Google Analytics. So we press import from Google Analytics. Press continue. Okay, so we need to link the accounts first. So if we just, can we open a new tab now? So we're going to go to linked accounts. Right, so on the next screen, you'll see that the status for AdWords and Analytics is not linked. So if we press link, and then you want to turn these on. Okay, so import the site metrics. So we want, to, we want to use this top view for all website data. Save. So that is the main view for our Google Analytics. There we go. So we can unlink it here if we'd like to. So now let's just go back to the conversion tracking. So that's tools, conversions, add conversion, import from Google Analytics. And then we've got other goals here. So it was farm completion there, import and continue. You've imported one girl from Google Analytics, done. There we go. Okay, so if we now go back to our, our campaigns, you see that the clicks, impressions, the click through rate, the cost of the click, cost, and then we've got conversions and cost per conversion here. If we go to keywords, we've got conversions, cost per conversion, conversion rate there. So now if somebody searches Google AdWords Agency and then fills in the form, it will appear there as a conversion. Really important step and I recommend not going live on any AdWords campaigns until the conversion tracking is set up. Finally, before the campaign goes live, we'll need to go to billing. So tools and settings, billing, billing settings. And then in here is where you can do your payment setup. So you can put all your information in here. Add credit card information and then submit that there. And then that should be good to go. You'll have an AdWords campaign with ad groups nicely organized. Within those ad groups will be your keywords. When those keywords get searched, you're gonna show the different ads that you've written with ad extensions in the locations that you want to target at the time that you want to show on the devices that you want to show and then once they go live um, you can then keep an eye on your information so is the keyword being shown is it generating clicks what is the cost per click how much he's spending on the keyword and is it converting ultimately this is the most important thing here so in another video, we're going to look at um, how to optimize your campaigns once they go live.